Hello, and thank you for joining me on my program tonight. I've got a message that it's just a little different, and it's entitled, Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb. You know, God so clearly told us about His Son from Genesis all the way to Revelations. We're going to be looking at that tonight as what I'm going to call pointers to Christ, the sacrificial lamb. I hope you'll stay with me and let's cover a study on the sacrificial lamb tonight. Let's begin in the book of Genesis. I said it's going to be from Genesis to Revelation, so let's start right out there in Genesis. Now, God had a friend. His name was Abraham. They were friends. And God had told Abraham that he would give him a son and he would bless him through this son. And that son's name was Isaac. So we know that that relationship between God and Abraham were well established, so much so that that kind of a conversation would carry on. And we know that God did, in fact, bless Abraham and Sarah in their old age with Isaac. Isaac is now a young boy, and God asked Abraham to do something that just seems so unusual. God tells Abraham to take young Isaac, his only son, and take him up to the altar for sacrifice. God says, carry that, that boy up the mountain to me. Let's begin in Genesis 23, verses 4 through 14. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place. This is the place that God had told him to go, afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Verse 6. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Verse 8, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son, and he laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Verse 13, Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Wow. Verse 14, And Abraham called the name of the place, The Lord Will Provide. You know, Abraham had a relationship of trust with God, so much so that he understood the character of God. You know, when we have a good friendship with someone, you get to know more than just the surface. You kind of get to know their heart, the person. In fact, sometimes you think, I almost, I know them so well, probably better than anybody around here, because why? Well, we hang out together. We're always around each other. I know his favorite color. I know what beverage he would order. I know them. 
Abraham knew God and he knew something about God. You see, God is a man of his word. He had given to Abraham and Sarah Isaac. And Isaac was to be the lineage where the blessings of inheritance would travel. Now God is asking him to bring Isaac to the altar. I believe Abraham thought to himself, my God, is God he's up to something. I don't know what he's up to, but I know he doesn't go back on his word. His word is always sure. And he told me Isaac would be the lineage. I'll obey because I will always obey my Savior, my God, but I don't understand. Following on, let's look at some key mark remarks that Abraham said. He told the young men before he even traveled on up further with Isaac, he said, the lad and I, we will return. Now, folks, that's called faith talk. Faith talk. He knew what God had told him to do. He had the fire, he had the wood, and he had the son, the only son. And they're marching up. But yet in faith, he said, we will return. If we could pick up on some lessons here today, we will return. Why? Because my God doesn't go back on his word. He said, he gave me Isaac. Then he said, the, look, the fire and the wood, where is the lamb? And we know Abraham said to his son, my God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Those were faith talks. You know, sometimes we've, we've started out with a faith walk. We meant well. We said, well, God's going to do it. I'm, well, I'm reading this verse right here, and it says God's going to do it. I'm going to stand on it. And we tell everybody, I'm going to stand on it. But you know what? Sometimes when we tell everybody God said it, I believe it, and that's enough. Another trial comes along. Another burden comes along. It gets harder. Abraham got all the way to the point of holding the dagger above his son. That's pretty close, folks, and that's pretty bad. Sometimes when we began to believe and take that faith walk, things get worse. How much worse can it get than this over your only son? But the heart of Abraham, he had spoken it, and one thing he knew was to obey God. He didn't know anything else to do but obey God. God could fix this any way he chose. Obey God. He had said something to his son that I think gives us an insight into the heart. He said, God's going to provide his own lamb. God will provide. When we begin our faith walk and it gets even harder, God will provide. You hold on to that word, whatever God gave you. I don't care what it is. Don't let go. God will provide. Moving on. I want to show one more piece about Abraham because see, this is in Genesis. This is when we're first introduced to God. This is when we first began to see what God is about. I believe that in addition to a faith walk by Abraham, I believe there was another story almost hidden in that story. God did provide the lamb for himself. God did have an only son. Abraham had to go in obedience to God and in obedience he raised that knife, but he was stopped. God, the Father, was not stopped. His Son was the sacrifice. I believe in this. We see it, the heart. You know, we can identify with Abraham. Oh, that son that he loved, 
that he cherished, that would follow along beside him. Now he's about to have to offer him to God. How we would identify with the heart of Abraham. I want us to look at that heart again. And God was beginning to just reveal a little of his own heart, I believe, to us. He was the father who had to give his son. His son was the lamb. Moving on, in Isaiah 53, we began to see how the Son of God would be treated by man. Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 1, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who believes this report today? Let me explain. You know, see, Jesus did come to the cross. He did die for our sins. But we act as though we don't believe any of it. Let me show you two reasons. One, you'll see some that say, I don't need that. That's all phony. I don't need any of that. You just go on, have your way. I don't, I don't need it. Isaiah, who's going to believe, said, who believes our report? And then there's those that says, I was too bad for God to ever forgive me. I was too bad for God to ever forgive me. And they go along with their head down as though they've been unforgiven and never will be forgiven. They refuse to accept God's love. God sent his son for the entire world. Those who have done wrong and they can't seem to forgive themselves. God said, I forgive you. Here, take my sacrificial lamb. Apply him to your life. Apply his blood to your life. Oh, the heart of God. How it must hurt worse, more, deeper for those who refuse to accept the son that he gave. Those who would say, go on, I don't need it. And those who would say, he'll never love me. Both have rejected the son that he holds there, the sacrificial lamb for us. Oh, how we must, we must accept what God has given. In verse 3, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him smitten, stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. Have you heard this message today? Have you accepted Jesus as your sacrificial lamb? And have you accepted him for your healing? Don't go on in your pain and your misery, including broken hearts, without accepting the healing that he also paid. Verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth, he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Isaiah told us the prophetic message of Jesus entering our grounds one day. In Abraham and Sarah, we saw the heart of God. Isaiah, the prophetic Let's move into the New Testament. Look at John the Baptist. John chapter 1, verses 35 and 36. Again, the next day, John stood with two of the disciples, his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold. What does behold mean? Now, I, we don't say it that often anymore. But behold means, look, cast your eyes upon, 
pay attention to. I want you to catch this, folks. Behold the Lamb of God. There was Jesus walking. That was the Lamb that was to be the sacrifice for you, for me. You know, all this time, they had been sacrificing animals and the blood was spilt before they could even enter the outer courts of the tabernacle. The blood was for a covering of their sins. It was not as pure as the, the pure blood of the Son of God. It was not a washing of the sins. It was a covering of the sins. Jesus, the pure once and for all blood was to wash away the sins of man, to give us robes white as snow. But we had to first receive the lamb. That was what John came to do. He was a forerunner of Jesus Christ. And his purpose was to tell us, there he is. Behold the lamb at your lamb, at your sacrifice. You apply the blood of Jesus to your life and you can now enter into the throne room of God himself because it's God's blood, the Son's blood that covers you, not your blood. And it's not an animal. That was the finish of all sacrifices of animals. Jesus, the sacrificial, sacrificial lamb for all time. Now, when John did that, he was telling us, you're leaving the animal sacrifice to a new era, folks. We're coming into an era of grace and mercy. Grace. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves, not of yourselves, including not going and getting an animal and, and slaughtering that animal for the blood. It's not of yourselves anymore, folks. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of works, lest anyone should boast. We are in an era of grace. Now we must receive. You know, you see, the other thing about when Jesus came and he died on that cross, he had to die. We, you, me, we were condemned to die. Remember, he's not only our sacrifice, he was our replacement. He stood where I was supposed to be. He died in my place that I could have life, life eternal. Oh, if I could get that across today, he took my place. He took your place. The sacrificial lamb applied to my life died for me. 1 Peter chapter 1, 10 through 11. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace of that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would come. You see, in the Old Testament, they searched the Scriptures. They studied the Old Testament and they would see he's going to come in Isaiah saw us so clearly in the vision how he would even be treated. They could only see prophetically. New Testament, Peter now declares, I saw him. I walked with him. First Peter 1 and 17. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you're not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. You can't buy salvation, folks. And you can no longer buy the dove for sacrifice, the lamb for sacrifice. You can't buy it anymore. Verse 19, But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb 
without blemish and without spot. Peter saw him. Peter walked with him. Peter saw the lamb spill his blood. Peter saw him arise. Peter saw him resurrected. Peter saw with his eyes. So when Peter talks to us in the New Testament, he's talking about what he saw. Isaiah talked about what he visual, his vision let him see. Peter saw what his eyes saw. I, I want us to understand something. When Jesus was a resurrected, the door was opened wide for the Lord to send down the Holy Spirit. Jesus re resurrected, the Holy Spirit came down. At no point were we ever left alone. At no point were we ever without God's pres presence, His Spirit. We were redeemed. Now, I think the key phrase here that we need to understand is we're not waiting to be redeemed. We are redeemed. The minute we take the blood of Jesus, the sac sacrificial lamb, and we say, Jesus, I receive you as my sacrifice. I receive you. I am no longer waiting to be redeemed. I'm no longer hoping to be redeemed. I'm going to travel away from my message for just a second. I've been ministering this week with a, a gentleman that is not expected to live much longer. A couple of weeks ago, I was blessed to be able to lead him to the Lord. He dealt with all the, the anxiety over who he had been, the regrets. I said, stop that. That's not who you're taking to heaven. You're taking the new creation to heaven. God gave you a new life, a new spirit. Now you turn around and you be as good as you know to be to anybody. You be Christ to everyone you come to. But let me explain something, folks. You are never too bad to receive God's grace. He didn't spill his son's blood and not intend for you to be covered for you to be purchased. You were never in his mind to be left back at the house. He intends to take you to heaven if you will just apply the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Yesterday, I went back to this man. He is a new man. And we talked about heaven, the glorious appearance of heaven itself. You see, once we are saved, and we know that we're heading on up. Let's talk about heaven. We can talk about heaven before, but boy, you know, whenever we take a vacation, we talk about it. We talk about every place we're going to go see. We talk about who we're going to visit while we're there. I'm telling you folks, when I get to heaven, I've got family. I've got a home waiting for me. I'm going to check out those streets of gold and that gates of pearl. I got things to look forward to. I've told my husband and everybody else, don't y'all hold me back here. I'm heading home. This is just a journey. The lamb's blood has been applied to my life and I've received it and I accept it. And I have life and you can too. God had me to write this message today. He gave his only son. He didn't require it of anybody else that you could have life. And now we're in that era of grace and mercy and forgiveness, but you must receive it. You can't just assume it's for somebody else. It was for you, for you and you. Yes, you. Revelations 5. I told you we'd start in Genesis end in Revelation. Revelations 5, beginning in verse 8. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain 
and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Folks, we're redeemed by the blood of the lamb that was slain. Which lamb is that? Go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis. God showed us what it looked like through Abraham and Sarah. He showed us that heart of that father that would come through. God will provide. He did. God provided. There is a lamb that was slain and it's got your name on it because he took your place. But you must pick up his name. You must pick up his name. Revelation verse 9 continues. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood the sacrificial lamb out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Verse 10, and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on earth. John says in verse 11, then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was ten thousands, ten thousands and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth as are in the sea and all of them I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. And they cried and said, amen. Today I say, amen. Have you received the lamb's blood, the sacrifice today? It must be applied. It was paid for full in your name. Jesus did it for you. You pick up his name, Jesus, I'm yours. Join me next week as we continue. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed Kingdom Ministries with Reverend D. Levins. For more from Dee, read The Long, Long Night, The Story of Destiny, and Echoes from God, a Christian study book for growing deep and strong in the faith. Connect with Dee and purchase her books at dlevins.com. Send an email to dlevinstv at gmail.com or text Dee at 254-681-6099.